Hi everyone, welcome. The bin that you see right here is my newest bin. It's a bin of Red Wigglers. It's four weeks old at this point, 28 days, and it was 14 days ago, two weeks ago, that it got last fed. It was its first and last feeding. It hadn't been um, given any food prior. Sometimes I build new bins, and before introducing the worms, I put some food in there too, but on this occasion, I built this new system with bedding only, so the worms that occupied this... Um, been actually lived in here for their first two weeks with no food so that feeding they got two weeks ago was actually their first feeding it wasn't much it was some celery there was a kiwi some coffee stuff that we probably won't see many leftovers of so I'm gonna get that thing up onto the bench and we're gonna probably give them some food but let's see let's make sure they need it first when you look down into this system you could see that there's only maybe an inch and a half of space remaining between the top of the covers here and the upper rim of the container. It's a little bit unusual for me to build a system quite this deep. 14 days ago I kind of looked at this thing and I thought to myself, geez Louise, how much bedding do I have in here? I would have to say that that was probably one of the main reasons last time that I didn't add bedding, which has kind of been my default for all of my systems other than my really old systems. On all my fairly new systems I've been attempting to be really generous with the bedding, adding some quite a bit usually on each occasion when we check in on the bin and feed it. We did not do that this time. We just used some of the existing surrounding bedding to cover up with at the end or even in the beginning to lay down as a foundation for the feeding. And I think we could probably stick to that game plan here for a little while at least. A system with this much bedding is not going to need more for a little while. Like I said last time, I think we'll just wait until this stuff starts to get a little bit more consumed and broken down. And then maybe at some point in the near future we can think about adding some more bedding with our feeding. That last coffee filter was indicating to us where we last fed. I don't know, in a couple of my other bins I've got a variety of different feeding styles going on. In one of them I've been stacking the feedings in between layers of bedding. I call that my lasagna feeding style. And then I've got another bin where I've been changing the corner that I feed in every time. And here I wondered if we could maybe adopt some sort of a similar break from my routine because I always tend to drop the food that I'm giving them down the middle a little bit, um, a little bit routine. It's, at least we always know where to look next time we come back in. But that's the whole reason of having an indicator to show where we last fed. I got these coffee filters. I can place it wherever we decide to feed to show ourselves, our future selves, where we last fed. Ooh, that was weird. I, I just kind of felt my... Um, it wasn't the cork. The cork isn't what I was reacting to. It was just somehow this um, piece of coffee filter down here I guess was so taut that when I reached down my my ring finger punched through the paper as you can see right here it made this tear because so I guess this cavity down here that we're seeing all these worms in must have resulted from them kind of mobbing around a certain portion of the bin to zero in on something they like leaving behind just a void so I believe what we're seeing down here looks like a potato but it's actually a kiwi the kiwi was not um, burst open or anything. It was just placed in here, and uh, for all I knew, it was an intact piece of fruit. And the skin on a kiwi is usually something that the worms have a tough time getting through. So I've had kiwis in the past take quite a long time before they broke down because I would just allow nature to take its course and not help the kiwi by breaking it open or anything like that. But over here, I can already see some of the green part of the inside of the kiwi. And it also looks like worms have made their way into the fruit. So I don't think that this kiwi is going to last months and months <laughs> like the one that we've got in our, or had in our outdoor um, system. Yeah, my outdoor system is no longer an outdoor system. It sits in the uh, stairwell protected from the really cold that we had a few weeks ago, although at this point we could probably turn it back into an outdoor system if we felt we wanted to. I guess we'll have to see about that. 
I'm trying to remember now we did have um, kind of a an averaged estimate for how many worms occupy this system here based on everyone's feedback when we originally populated this bin I got a variety of different estimates on how many worms people thought they saw when we were doing the haul out and when we did the release I believe that the number is somewhere in the neighborhood of 1265 I didn't really make note of it but I believe it is something like that I did actually write it down the other day when we were uh, checking on the system that these worms originated from 28 days ago this is only about half of the worms that came out of that system where we got them from the other half of them are still kind of huddled together in the collection area I'm giving that system a little bit more time for the last of the worms to exit the finished compost then we'll do a final haul out and I thought about bringing them into this system including them with this population building this bin up to have a really large population but I think we've already got a good number of worms in here that's weird <laughs> if I'm not mistaken I'm seeing a worm but it's actually punched right through this corner of the cork so this cork has been in my systems forever I forget how it ended up entering my systems but I believe it somehow ended up outside and came back in or whatever the case may be it's just a funny little item which I never expected to see go very far but I did at one point actually chip this corner off pretty easily months ago and now I'm actually seeing a worm burrowed through it so weird so I, I didn't come down here prepared with any food I thought I would you know give this um, system a quick check before we try to jam any more food into it I kind of suspected that we would find very little because like that celery that was put in here two weeks ago that's the sort of thing you would not find many leftovers of I thought we might find some of those fibrous strands that make up the inside of each piece of celery but you know after two weeks and considering that this bin didn't have food prior and that what they got was so little last time I'm not really surprised that we're finding virtually nothing in here other than the kiwi <laughs> And the kiwi, I don't know, I think it might um, take a little while for it to break down, so we might have to wait for that to reach its conclusion. But it's obviously gotten the attention of the worms, probably got a lot to do with the moisture content of it. But I'm going to have to head upstairs to the kitchen to uh, go grab a few things from the freezer for them. So I'll be right back, and uh, we'll pick up where I left off when I return. I'm not sure if it's coming through on the video, but this coffee is still so warm that it's steaming. It came right out of the coffee machine. And it looks like a pretty huge feeding. It does have a pretty good amount of weight, but the majority of what you see here is just frozen cabbage leaves. It's like one cabbage leaf seems to take up a huge amount of space just based on its shape and the fact that it's frozen. So I got a feeling that once this stuff ejects all of its moisture into the system and starts to collapse down after thawing it'll occupy a whole lot um, less space than it does right now the coffee um, the coffee will help thaw things out I suppose too because it's a bit warm but now we we sort of set the stage as if we're feeding down the middle but I think we decided we're gonna try to change things up it's a it's a feeding pattern that's not that interesting but it's one that I remember doing long long ago in the beginning and I don't think I've done it in many years and it's as simple as just flip-flopping from one side to the other in effect getting your worm population to traverse the entire length of the system going from one end to the other in pursuit of the latest feeding so I'm gonna give that a try here I don't know if it's got a name it's just sort of you know the one that takes you from one far end to the other going back and forth maybe it maybe it does have a name like the back and forth method or something <laughs> I don't know if anyone's aware of it, this method of feeding style having an actual um, name to it, then please let me know. I've got, I've got a fresh coffee filter over there that we're going to uh, use as our feeding zone indicator. It'll help us remember that this was where we last fed. So that coffee filter that we pulled out from down low within the feeding, the one I punched my finger through, as well as this one that had been serving the function of feeding zone indicator till now we're gonna rest them at the bottom of this feeding area so in effect they are getting some supplementary bedding 
as part of this feeding. But I think we're going to do the same as we did last time, is not add any, um, any more of my pre-made bedding like we usually do. Is this the worm that was... <laughs> I think it might be. Whatever. All right, we're going to put the cork back down where we typically put it, which is down where the feedings have been happening. And I guess we could start laying in the food. This is a nice big hunk of the head of cabbage that I um, made some stuffed cabbage out of the other day. So in an effort to get down to the nice fresh tender leaves, these ones on the outside that had signs of wear, all kind of came off the largest greenest leaves and you make your way in and you start getting into the nice fresher leaves. So this is kind of all the rejected stems that I cut out of each leaf that I wrapped the little um, meatball into, if you will. So now, what else? We got the coffee. I'm going to combine the food that they're getting here so that it's sort of a smorgasbord, a little bit of the veggies, a little bit of the coffee, even the kiwi. A little bit of the leftovers from the last feeding have already gone in. I wonder when that kiwi is going to pick up some momentum. It seems like at some point there's got to be a tipping point where suddenly it has suddenly become accessible for the worms to be able to just chow down on it. I would assume that something's resisting um, the approach of the worms. Maybe something about the the um, the content of the material somehow. I don't know. For some reason I thought I recalled that kiwi might have been a little bit acidic or something or maybe some sort of breakdown of the juices has to happen before the worms can really move in. I don't know. I think we've also got some little bits and pieces of green beans here. That might have come over as a contribution from my mom. I don't remember cutting up green beans. I definitely remember processing this head of cabbage though. It was a lot of work. <laughs> That's a pretty good size feeding. We still got a little bit of coffee to sprinkle in onto the top of it. And then we can save this coffee filter with which to cover up our feeding zone to show us where we last fed. Before we cover up the let's let's include a little bit of this pulverized eggshell. It's the grit that I use in my worm bin. Some people use sand or rock dust or crushed uh, crustacean shells, whatever the case may be. The worms, I think, can get by without it, but it's um, it's often used by worm farmers to help the worms aid in their uh, breakdown of the materials that they're being given because they, uh, they process food in a slightly different way than we do, and they need to be able to swallow little tiny coarse substances such as those pulverized bits of eggshell that I gave them to help in the uh, the breakdown of the foods that they're being given. All right, so that's where we last fed. I don't know, we, we did pretty much scour through the middle looking for leftovers and checking out the worms. And we did excavate the other side to provide them with a place to apply their second feeding here. I'm just gonna take a quick peek at down on this edge too to see how things look. Since this is the side of the bin over here that's got the um, the label on it. This is the side of the bin facing inside the room. And what I've been finding is that there's kind of warmer air on the inside of the room and there's cooler air up against the wall. And a lot of um, a lot of my worm bins seem to uh, show signs of the worms gravitating towards the warmer end of the, the bin. So I was just curious to see if we might find some worms down here. The material's nice and damp and everything like that, but I definitely don't see quite as many worms in it as we saw picking around down through the middle where the food was or picking it down around here where the, um, I believe the slightly warmer material might be. So that's pretty cool. I think this system looks pretty good and uh, I'm just curious, you know, do you agree that this is a, a, a fair size population to sort of take over this bin and to build out their numbers adequately to um, occupy this thing completely? Or should I still be planning on adding more worms? I've almost decided um, 
completely at this point that the, the next whole lot of worms of the system where I originally got these worms from will be used to launch off a new system of its own versus piling more of them in here alongside the existing worms in here. And I, I do have a feeling that what we've got in here is a pretty good size worm population. So I don't think we need to worry. I think we'll be um, better off giving that other batch of worms its own space and stick into the 1265 or whatever it is that we've got in here. But um, I think we're almost done. We just gotta cover up and put away. But before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a quick thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.